Hello, you calculus students and general seekers of truth. Welcome to the lesson on the product and the quotient rules. So before this lesson, hopefully you've learned the derivative of the sum of two functions. And now we're going to deal with what if you have a function that is the product of two other functions? What would be its derivative? And uh, before we get into figuring out what that is, let me just show you what it's not. So in this case, if h of x is f times g, h prime is most certainly not f prime times g prime. Okay, And I can illustrate this by just saying, uh, you know, a counterexample of this would be if h of x was equal to say x squared times x cubed. Okay. So this x squared would be f and g would be uh, x cubed. And if we if we thought about it this way, so if we thought about this as f and we thought about this as g, then f prime would be 2x and g prime would be 3x squared. So f prime times g prime would be 6x cubed. Okay. Now I know that this is this rule doesn't work simply because if you considered h again, another way that we could write h is x to the fifth. And if we took h prime the way that we know with the product with the uh, the power rule, this would be 5x to the fourth. See, so this number and this number are most certainly not equal. So this rule here, if if only we could just simply take the derivative of one, take the derivative of the other, and multiply them together, that would make make life a lot easier. Unfortunately, that's just not true. Okay, so we're gonna have to go back to the original definition of a derivative. So we know that h, excuse me, h prime is going to be equal to the limit, and I'm, I already used h here, so I'm going to pick some other variable. So I'll go k with k. As k approaches 0 of h of x plus k minus h of x divided by k. But h of x plus k is really f of x plus k g of x plus k. So all I'm really doing is taking the definition of this function and substituting x plus k into here, minus f of x, g of x. All of this over k. And you can see here that it's not so easy to uh, untangle this mess here. There's a lot of stuff going on here, and uh, it's not going to be easy to separate this. So the new trick here is that we're going to add 0. And I said before that in calculus proofs, you, a lot of times you multiply by 1 or you add 0. And adding 0 is actually a pretty, uh, pretty tricky concept and, and a, a quite a powerful one. The, the key part to it is determining what, what version of 0 do you really want. Okay. So I'm just writing down exactly what I had before. So, so I took what's on the previous line, copied it down, and I'm going to leave this part in the middle here for me to add 0. Okay? And I'm going to add 0 this way. Okay, so you can see here the part that I wrote in red is exactly equal to 0. Minus f of x plus k times g of x plus f of x plus k times g of x. Okay? So the part in red that I wrote here is exactly equal to zero. There's nothing else really special about it. Now you might be thinking, well, where did this come from? Well, it's always easier to, to replicate a proof 
after someone's done it already the first time. And I'm not sure how this person thought of that either, but they were probably playing around with some graphs and certain, uh, certain geometric figures in order to see this property come about. And then they just worked it out algebraically. So you're not expected to just suddenly see how to do this. It comes around, you're, you're seeing sort of the end value of um, a ton of really intricate, painstaking mathematical work. Okay? But now, what I'm going to do from this point on is do some regrouping. Okay? So I'm going to just take this first part here and group it together. And then I'm going to take the second part and group that together. And in this first part, you can see that I have f of x plus k in common, right? fx plus k. So I can factor that out. And what I have left is g of x plus k. And the pen's running out of ink here. Okay. So I have g of x plus k here minus g of x. Alright. All of this over k. And over here, what I have is still the plus. And I'm going to factor out a g of x here. And what's remaining is f of x plus k minus f of x. All of that over k. So what I've effectively done is took this fraction, split it, and at the same time factored out the, the common components. And now um, we can rewrite this as a bunch of different limits. Now we can apply um, certain limit properties. So I'm going to write this down in a couple pieces at a time. So this is really the limit as k approaches 0 of f of x plus k times, so I'm taking this part out, times the limit as k approaches 0 of g of x plus k minus g of x over k plus the limit as k approaches 0 of g of x times the limit as k approaches 0 of f of x plus k minus f of x, f of x plus k minus f of x, over k. Alright, so Again, what happened here was I have a limit of a long expression, and applying the properties of limit, I could split it into each individual little limits. Okay. So instead of the limit of this green part, I can just say it's the limit of f of x plus k times the limit of this remaining part right here, g of x plus k minus g of x. And I can do the same thing over here. I can pull out the, make that the limit of g of x, times the limit of x plus k minus f of x. And as you, you can see here that this is going to make things uh, quite a bit simpler. So if you look at here, as k approaches 0, this limit here just becomes f of x. So as k really goes towards 0, this expression here just becomes f of x times here this is exactly the derivative, this is the derivative of g. Right? If you look at just this part alone, that's just the derivative of g. Plus, this limit here is just g of x because there's no k in here. The, the, the variable that we're taking the limit of is not even involved in here. Times, and if you look at this part, this part looks exactly like the derivative of f. So that's just f prime. And once we make it to the end, you can see that there really is um, 
a, uh, you know, a way to evaluate the derivative of a product, um, and it is this. And we can say this in this in the way, the de the the first function times the derivative of the second, plus the second function times the derivative of the first, okay? and this is called the product law or the product rule. And so there you have it. I know that was a little bit lengthy, but I had to show you uh, where this rule really comes from. And you can see that this, this rule right here is much different than what we hoped it would be. We hoped this would be something simple, but it's not. It's, it's a little bit more complicated than that. So I'll end this video here, and I'm going to continue another, I'm going to start another video where we actually look at some examples. As always, ask for help if you need it. Thank you for watching, and have a wonderful day.